Hi everyone, my name is Lottie Graham and I'm so sorry I can't be with you in person today, but I'm here to talk about my documentary film Fish Talk and directing a documentary about fish communication. So as a film director, I have many challenges to face. The main challenge is to hold your attention. What is the most successful outcome of a documentary? Activating change. That can then have an input on changing world policies. Dramatic, right? But we've seen it happen before, time and time again. Blackfish, Sea Spiracy, My Octopus Teacher, Chasing Coral. A documentary has the power to inform you about a world you may or may not have access to and has the ability to change your perceptions and influence future decisions of how you interact with the environment, people, and in our case, species of fish around you. So as a film director and storyteller, holding someone's attention is so important in order to inspire a change in you. A thought you hadn't perhaps thought before for you to physically make that change and make a difference. Studying fish talk to each other, how will this help the climate crisis when there are concerns of mass extinction, mass habitat loss, global war warming, and coral degradation? How does listening to fish communicate on a daily basis and analyzing the details of their behavior, how they interact, have a place in these conversations? Is there a point to all this? And why make a film about this? I'm not having a crisis, <laughs> but luckily our main character either has the answer. And it's important to ask these questions before making a film. Isla, our main character in the film, says it's impossible to expect an individual to solve all our problems and activate such dramatic change. Rather, it's best to think of her research as a building block to a grand cathedral. Perhaps she won't see the finished product in her lifetime, but she will be an essential part to its completion and future influence. The details are important because learning how fish communicate, how they are able to recognize each other through facial recognition codes, for example, adapt their frequencies and sounds, form friendships, deceive other fish, have sophisticated memory patterns, make decisions that are both for enjoyment and survival. The more we understand about fish, the more we can view them in a light that is hard not to appreciate them. But my main challenge and Isla's challenge is to communicate this effectively. How can you portray the emotion behind this in a scientific, reliable, engaging, accessible way? How can scientists prove the intricate social behaviors of fish? For example, groups of rays jumping in the air for what is believed to be enjoyment. How can you express a feeling that you have that they behave this way for fun? after spending days and days, months and years with these groups to know instinctively about them. But it's so hard to prove this completely. It's kind of like when your dog looks at you in a certain way, you sort of know what they are saying, but how can you prove this? It's a feeling, spending time with them. So how do you communicate this with people looking at you like, fish communication, okay. <laughs> How can we gain global respect and recognition for studies like this? How do we make a film about this? How can we build our cathedral? Well, I'll ask you what fish are to you. When you see a fish, what's your perception of it? The next time you see a fish in a photo or you, you look at a fish in the ocean, tell me a few things, your first impressions. Prey or predator, collaborative or individual, smart, dumb, thoughtful, deceptive, social. The other challenges we face in making a documentary, or is making a documentary on this scale. Where do we start in preparation? For us, it started with a Zoom call with Isla at the beginning of the pandemic. Inspired by her story and the work she was doing, I asked if I could film some of it and put together a short film. But the more conversations I had and the more I prepared the story of the documentary, the more I realized it was a feature length 90 minute film rather than a 10 or 20 minute. This world is a fascinating one and it needs to be shown in more depth. 
the real day-to-day -day lives of these young scientists, the very real struggles they face of simply gaining funding, persuading other people, persuading people like yourselves that their work is legitimate and deserves investigation. Not only are they dealing with all of this, but dealing with the emotional stress of our natural planet suffering serious environmental change and their work constantly being in relation to the climate crisis. Can't study a fish for a fish anymore. It's always in connection to population depletion, temperature changes, parasites, acidity, suffering. And when you're on location recording this on a day-to-day -day basis, it, it's emotionally straining. It's heartbreaking. And Isla is a scientist passionate about supporting other young scientists and bringing the importance of, of understanding ecological grief to the forefront and showcasing the importance of realizing emotion in science and not shying away from it. That it's okay to be a scientist and to be emotional. I have learned so much from Isla and I've learned so much from the scientists that I had to share these stories and that feeling to the world. COVID-19 was another giant stepping stone. We couldn't film Isla for a long time and had to stick with recording to our, recording our Zoom conversations. We spent that first year trying to raise funding alongside Isla trying to raise our own funding for research. Isla's research locations kept changing um, due to COVID-19, which is hard to follow and funding problems that, that she had. So like us, we had to make what felt like hundreds of funding applications, proposals and production plans for each different location. I was doing exactly the same, with the same result, nothing. Back to the drawing board. It is extremely frustrating putting a lot of work in for it all to be basically scrapped. To do this for two years is a lot. Isla did this. But February this year, the stakes were high when she finally got a green light. We'd also managed to do a successful Kickstarter campaign with a huge wave, pun intended, <laughs> of support. This boosted all of our confidence. It meant we would be able to hire equipment, get a small crew together and go and film her. When Isla got that green light, I was excited, terrified, and couldn't quite believe it. But also, I knew how much this meant to her. Because as a marine biologist, not being able to spend your time in the natural environment you love so much and you study, it's a struggle. This was so important to her. And from learning from her peers and superiors, I knew that she flourishes in the field and this, this was important. I bought the flights, I rented the equipment and there was no going back. We were off to Curacao in the Caribbean. I wasn't going to believe it until I had my feet on the ground in Curacao. Even then, it had been so long, who knew if we'd be sent back or for some reason arrive at the research center and they say like, oh, we changed our minds, <laughs> you can't film. And phew, none of that happened, but you have these thoughts running in the back of your mind. The challenges ahead were now capturing either in a way that honors her as a character and her work in the best light, in the right light. We wanted to show these scientists as honestly and authentically as possible. We filmed mainly at the research center, Kamarbi, and then traveled around the island on various research projects, either and her team were up to. We got to meet many scientists who, another challenge, were incredibly open to the project and filming, but it could have gone the other way, which is completely fair enough. We were just rocking up and filming these scientists and they could have very easily said, no, thank you. And when I say just rocking up, I mean, with Isla, we've had these long conversations, but sometimes with other characters or, or interactions or things change in documentary, it's very hard to control it. And you can't control it, it's, it's real life. So that is another challenge that you can face. But Isla has been incredible to work with and we've been extremely collaborative, which is exciting for me as a filmmaker. And we got this incredible shot of them all on the edge of the research center on the pier, above the blue tropical water as the sun went down. And they started talking about their work their experience and, and really feeling what it's like as this young marine biologist. It was a pretty special shot, pretty special moment. So we're filming more and I'm currently in the editing process as well, film. As I've said before, the 
the main challenge is communication, the correct communication. But for me, continuing to work closely with these incredible scientists will ensure the correct communication. And introducing you all to this world will help activate some of the changes we need to make. And understanding that provide a beautiful, irreplaceable, and sometimes inexplicable connection to the natural world and the oceans around us. Listen to those fish. Next time you swim in the water, get a snorkel, goggles, and just watch and listen. You might see and hear something that you've never quite seen or heard before. Thank you.